Who's ready to go to church tonight, amen? I said, who's ready to go to church tonight, amen? Who's ready to get their shine on? Ladies, where's your hankies at? Come on. Yeah. All right, man, let's kick it off, brother. the 
There is none like you, Jesus. Lord, we worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let the King of my heart be the fountain where I run. The fountain where I run. Oh, he is my soul. Let the King of my heart shadow where I hide the ransom for my life oh he is my son cause you are good the good oh yeah you are good the good oh come on sing it you are good you good oh you are good, you're good. Oh. Let the king of my heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from. Oh, he is my song. Yes, let the king of my You are good, <laughs> you're good. Oh, you are good, you're good. <laughs> oh, you are good, you're good. Oh, you are good, you're good. Oh, let the king of Inside my sails, the anchor in the waves. Oh, he is my song. Let the king of my heart be the fire inside my veins, the echo of my days. Oh, he is my song. Cause you are good, you're good. Oh, you are good, you're good, oh, 
You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. <laughs> you're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. And I said, You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. And I said, Hey, you're never gonna let, you're never gonna let. All right, declare it tonight. Come on and say it. You're never gonna. No love, come on. You're never gonna let me You're never gonna let me come on, let's oh, I know. You're never gonna let me down. 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 One second. You know, I, I, I bind every distraction in this house tonight, Father. Everything outside of these four walls, whatever has happened today in these women's lives, God, I, I bind the distractions, the worry, the regret. Whatever may be going on in this house tonight in these minds, God, I declare freedom in the name of Jesus. Because you are the king of my heart, Lord. And I know that no matter what, you're never going to let me down. People may, people are always, they're going to let you down. When you put your faith and hope in man, every time they're going to let you down. Every time, it never fails. Dad says it all the time, I, I honor this man, my pastor. I honor this man, but he ain't going to get me to heaven. You can't ride the coattails of people and, may, and just think you're going to make it to heaven. So tonight... All the worrying and all the distractions that are going outside of these four walls, lady, I'm telling you tonight, there's breakthrough in the house. <laughs> there is breakthrough in the house. But, like I said a couple weeks ago, you got to get your butt out of the way. <laughs> you got to leave your butt at the door. But too much is going on in my life. But I got this, but I got that. But who, who cares? You came to the right place tonight. <laughs> So why don't we as women, I want to encourage y'all. You know what? Let's just do this. I don't do this on Sunday. Let's all come to the front tonight. Come on, every one of us. Every one of us. Let's make a move. You have no choice tonight. Come on, let's make a move tonight. Let's step out of our box tonight. Come on. Because no matter what, this right here. You're never going to let me down. You're never going to Yes, Jesus, God. We thank you, Father. Believe. Yes, we believe. Oh, you're never going to let me down. You know, I, I don't know. There, there may be a difference, but I think faith is one thing, but I think you've got to believe, too. And until you decide to believe, women, those things that are going on in your life, and until you line up like pastor preaches, until you line up with the word of God, until you line up and believe, you believe, ladies, you believe, then you're going to continue to stay in the shape that you're in. I know, that, I know that women here tonight came for a breakthrough. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here because it's a Thursday night. You got dishes to do. You got, you got clothes to fold. You got, you, you got to do all these kinds of women things that I'm blessed and I don't have to do it very much. <laughs> but he's never going to let you down. And you've got to believe it tonight, amen? So what I want to sing right here is you're never going to let me down. And then we're going to go to the second verse, okay? Mm, Jesus. Hallelujah. Mm. God wants to do something tonight. Let the king of my heart be the wind inside my sails, the anchor in the waves. Oh, he is my song. Come on, sing it. Let the king of my heart be the fire inside my veins, the echo of my days. Oh, he is my soul. Come on, because you are. You go. 
you'll never come on. Believe this. You're Yes, you're And I said Come on, believe it tonight Woo! And I said You're Ooh, yes One more time, you're never gonna let me down You're, you're never gonna, gonna let me You're never gonna, gonna let me down No, no, no You are good, Lord. Cause you are good. You're good. You are good. You're good. Oh, you are good. You're good. Oh, you are good. You're good. Oh, let the key. Let the king of my heart be the fire inside my veins, the echo of my days. Oh, cause you are good. You're good. Is the fire 
inside of my veins. Understand that is the fire, the anointing is inside of your veins. You just got to believe it. You know, Angel, she spoke Wednesday night. That was last night. My days are back and forth. <laughs> but she said something. What separated Jesus so much was not that he was the father. I mean, that was the reason. But he said, we can choose to. <laughs> we can choose to be the difference. Some people want to be veterinarians, like she said. Some of the kids said, I want to be veterinarians. I want to be this. I want to be that. But till the day we say, I want to raise the dead. <laughs> I want a, a, a bold difference. And we have a boldness tonight. And we can walk in a boldness because he is the fire inside of your veins tonight. And when you grasp a hold of the fire inside of your veins, you are unstoppable, women. You are unstoppable. You are bold. You are courageous. You shine on. Amen. Woo. God has wanted to do something in this house tonight, and it's so hard to turn this off. So I'm going to turn it on a little bit more. <laughs> Let's do verse 2 one more time because you ladies need to realize that the fire is inside of your veins. No devil. I'm, I'm telling you, my mom was prayed. Some, my dad prays some crazy prayers. But my mom, I, I, I've seen her one time, and I'm going to be done. But I dealt with something for two years straight, and I couldn't. It was like an oppressive spirit trying to attach itself to my life. And I, I, I shut it down every, every time I could. I shut it down. It would come to my mind. I'd shut it down. It would come to my mind. I'd shut it down. And maybe somebody's dealing with that tonight. But my mom is a woman of God. <laughs> and she had enough of this spirit. And I was young, so I didn't really understand what was really going on. But she did, and my dad didn't. My dad would say, oh, just get over it. You know? <laughs> but my mom, who was resilient, she's like, I understand what you're going through. Well, one night, where we live now, it was probably the last night I ever dealt with this. <laughs> and um, I really believe it was going to go one way or another way if it wasn't for this night. But she came. I was like, Mom, I never yelled for my father, ever, ever, <laughs> ever, unless I absolutely had to. Like if there was something trying to come through my window, I would yell at my dad. But everything else, it was, Mom, I'm thirsty. Mom, my stomach hurts. All this stuff. I was always Mom. It was never Dad because Dad would say, get over it, you know. <laughs> Be a man. No. <laughs> but this night, she came. I was like, Mom, come in my room. And I, there, was a, there was such an oppressive spirit in my room. And, <laughs> whew, and I couldn't move. All I could do was yell out for my mom. And all I could see in my room was nothing but a complete shadow that was just moving and it was manifesting and it was just getting bigger and bigger. And this is a true story, y'all. True till the day I die. <laughs> moving and manifesting. It kept getting bigger and it kept getting closer. And I say, Jesus, and it back away. But that's all I could do was say, Jesus, and it wouldn't leave. It would not leave me. I don't know what was going on. It would not leave me. But mama showed up. And she got sick. There's, I don't know if it was fixed, but there was a hole in the wall that my mama made from the door. She opened it up so fast it made a hole in the wall. I think it's fixed now. But, but she opened that door, and she came in my room. <laughs> and with boldness and authority... And the fire inside of her veins, she said, I rebuke you, spirit. You, ain't, you can't have no hold on my child. Get out of this house in the name of Jesus. And she started going off and speaking in tongues. And, and I think that scared me more. No. I was like, I ain't messing with you. <laughs> Chill. <laughs> but until that day, I'm telling you, we all in this room have that kind of fire have that kind of boldness 
that we can step in and we can say, devil, in the name of Jesus, the name above all names, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Get out of my house. Get out of my life. Woo! We've got to stand up for what's ours, women. And I'm speaking like I'm a woman tonight, and I don't know why, but I'm getting excited. <laughs> Woo! It encourages me to see you ladies in here. One more thing, and I'm done. I'm sorry. I'm taking time. I apologize. And, and this is, this is it. You guys have dreams, and you have visions, and we have things that we have in our lives. But until, until you choose, <laughs> because, Pastor, it's a choice. It's a choice. You can choose to live in hell and chaos, or you can choose to live in the righteous and unjust. You can, you can choose to live how you want to live tonight. I'm not saying it's going to be easy. I'm not saying that it's easy. I got 29 years of heartache, man. <laughs> it ain't always been easy, but I can tell you when it's good, it's great. The mountaintops are good, but when I get in the valleys, I just rejoice and thank God because I know he's going to bring me out. And you may be in a valley tonight, but you got to understand that Jesus is going to bring you out. He's going to bring you out. Sandra, he's going to bring you out tonight. Ladies. All right, we're going to do this, and I'm going to move. Number two, let the king of my heart be the wind inside my sails, the anchor in the waves. Oh, he is my song. Let the king of my heart be the fire inside my veins, the air. don't we ladies wow all I can say is wow come on say it with me one two three wow <laughs> it's a wow anointing hallelujah don't you just feel it tonight hallelujah look at your neighbor right beside you and grab her hand and hold her hand up to Jesus and let's just pray right now father God 
I ask you, Lord Jesus, right now, this very time, Lord, God, help my friend right now tonight, Lord Jesus. Give her strength. Give her a miracle tonight, Lord Jesus. Break the yoke of bondage off her children, off her children's children, off her finances, Lord Jesus, off of every sickness that is coming her way tonight, Lord Jesus. We bind you, devil. You're a liar. And we are taking back what the devil has tried to steal from us. This very tonight, God, hallelujah, we are going to shine on. You've tried to steal and kill and destroy, but you have come. God has come to give us life and more abundant life. Hallelujah. Now look at your neighbor on the other side. Say, we're going to win. Hallelujah. We're going to make it. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor on the other side and say, together. We can put 10,000 to flight, devils, right? Come on. It's going to be good. Oh, yeah. Let's have Pastor Amanda to testify. I'm so excited that she is with us. Hallelujah. She's going to bring the house down. Woo. And we're going to hear her testify right now. And you don't want to miss tomorrow night and Saturday morning because God's going to do great things. Put your hands together. Let's put a great big welcome to Pastor Amanda Pratt. Hallelujah. Come on, how many's excited tonight? I, I'm, more, I'm way more excited about tonight than, e than even tomorrow night because I know God is getting ready to flip the script. Amen. Everything the enemy said, he was going to wage war against your family, your finances, your job, your marriage. He may come with his weapons of warfare. It doesn't mean they won't be formed, but they will not prosper. And everything that he has meant for evil in your life, God said, you watch me turn it for good. Oh, yeah, yeah. Come on, just lift up your hands. We, we like to do it like this because there's no other way to fight your battles. Listen, if you try to fight it in the flesh, guess what? You're going to reap some flesh. It's going to get real stinky and real messy. But if I get on the level of God, and listen, he's calling us up tonight. He's calling us up this week, and he said, like Moses, I want you to come on up into the glory cloud. Come on, we're going higher. This is the only way to fight our battles is we just got to look up to the hills which come at our help and say, Father, we thank you, God. Woo! I don't have to worry myself, no. But if I walk in the spirit of the living God, I'll see the things of the spirit tonight. This is how I fight my battles. Come on. This is how I fight my battles. Yeah. This is how I fight my battles. I worship you, Lord. I fight my battles. I fight my battles. This is how. Come on, sing it out. We worship you, yeah. This is how I fight my battles. Woo! This is how I fight my battles. So you might not be feeling well in body tonight. I may not feel like it. I may not look like it. Everybody else may have counted you out, but this is how I'm going to fight my battles. Hey, Hebrews 10 says he is faithful who has promised. Has anybody got any promises? Does anybody have some things they need to claim in the spirit realm? The enemy didn't take them. God said go back and claim what is already done in the spirit. Woo! This is how I fight my battles. Woo! This is how I fight my battles. Hey. This is how I fight my battles. We worship your name, Jesus. We worship your name, Jesus. Hmm. Listen, miracle signs and wonders. You know what? The Lord needs you to walk in healing so that you can go and testify 
So the sinner can come in and be saved by grace and be in awe of an almighty God again. It's not just so you can sit and feel good. Amen. It's not just so you can say, well, hallelujah, I get to go do what I want to do. No, God said, I'm going to heal you when you'll testify of my goodness. He said, I'm going to deliver you when you get ready to cross the Jordan. You got to do some stuff. You got to worship him. You got to get ready to fight some battles. Get some weapons of warfare out. My God is able. excited to be with you this weekend. Woo! Come on, get ready. Get ready. Get ready. We are so blessed because of what this church raised up. Uh-huh. You know, one of the, Jesus said it. He said of A prophet is not welcome in his own home, and I'm going to declare that that's not the case in this house tonight. That you're going to honor what God has raised up right here in the midst of you. What the enemy said he was going to cut off and take out. What the enemy said would never be, but God said, you watch what I'll do. So we thank you in Hendersonville, man and woman of God, for what you did in this atmosphere and in this season so we could be blessed by your seed. Woo! I love you. I love you. How many of y'all are ready for the word tonight? How many of y'all are thankful for the word of God? Hallelujah. Kim, it's good to have you too, girl. I love you, girl. I love you. It's so good to have everybody. I'm telling you what, Courtney, come on up here, baby girl. This girl right here is my sunshine. She's my life. I call her every day. I miss her like crazy, but I am so happy to know what God is doing in her life, the anointing that he's placed on her life. I wouldn't call her back home for nothing. I love her so much. This girl right here is my angel. I'm telling you, she is, she's just. I really don't want to cry right now, but I love you. You're going to cry. She's my sunshine. She's my baby girl. There's only one baby girl. (laughs) I know that's yours. (laughs) But I'm so thankful for my girl to be here. There's nothing like having her. And I know God's raising you up for such a time as this. And you just let the Spirit of God anoint you tonight. Come on, y'all. Put your hands together and welcome our very own Courtney Builderback Curtis from Restoring Hope. Pastor Amanda, we love y'all. Come on. Hello. Hello. I'm just so excited to be here tonight. And it's just an honor to be here. And I'm thankful for my parents. I'm thankful for my grandparents. I'm thankful for my mother-in-law. Like, I'm thankful for my spiritual mama. I can't name everybody because someone will get upset. And I don't, and I love all of y'all, but I'm just thankful. I'm just thankful for the raising that I've had. I'm thankful for my aunts. My gosh, I'm so blessed with a great family. We're crazy, but we're crazy for Jesus. So um, if you guys hang out with us at all, you will realize that we are completely nuts. But I love it because we're real, and we don't put a front on for anybody other than nobody, actually. Um, Anyway, first and foremost, I'm thankful, so thankful for this opportunity because I don't take it lightly. I don't take it lightly to speak the word, and I don't feel like I'm capable, but I know that when God says it, it's it. When God says it, it's it. And so I'm thankful for this song that I'm about to sing. And I feel like tonight he's going to do some things. And you, I have it like in my spirit that God is about to do some things in you, that, that he's creating new wine in you. And as I was 
thinking and I was waking up and God just kept putting this song on my heart and I was like, God, do you really want me to sing it? Because it, I don't know if they'll understand it. And I had this lady come up to me. Don't She doesn't even know what I'm really doing. And, and she's like, God showed me you singing new wine. And I was like, okay, confirmation. So I'll, I'm going to do it. Um, and it says, nor do they put new wine into old wineskins or else the wineskins break. The wine is spilled and the wineskins are ruined. But they put new wine into wineskins and are both preserved. So I'm believing that tonight we're going to be put in new wineskins. That the Holy Spirit is going to mold us tonight. Through this word, I pray that it changes. I pray that it changes y'all, but it's been changing me. So if it's changing me, it's going to change y'all. So. In the crushing, in the pressing, you are making new one. In the starlight, now surrender, you are breaking new ground. So I give to you into your careful hand cause when I trust you I don't need to understand make me your vessel make me an offering make me whatever you want me to be I came here with nothing but all you have given me, Jesus, bring new wine out of me. I believe that everything that we battle, we go through, it's just preparing us that through the crushing, through the pressing, I don't know about y'all, but I've been crushed and I've been pressed on both sides. But I'm thankful because it is making new wine. That I believe that when we go through things in life, that he is bringing new wine out of us. That the Holy Spirit is making us. He's shaping us. So, in the crushing, in the pressing, you are making new wine. In the soul I now surrender, you are breaking new ground. So I give to you into your careful hand. When I trust you, I don't need to understand. Make me your vessel. Make me an offering, make me, you want me to be. I came here with nothing, but all you have given me, Jesus, bring new wine out of me. Because where there is new wine, there is new there is new freedom and the kingdom is here I lay down my old flame to carry a new fire today cause where there is new way there is new power there is new freedom and the kingdom is here so I lay down my old flames to carry your new fire today. Today, Jesus, I carry your new fire today. Carry your new fire. We're carrying your new fire tonight, Jesus. That when we leave here, Father, that we're not going to be the same as when we walked in, Father. We're believing it, God. Jesus, I pray that this word touches, but help me, God, let it be your voice, not my own. 
not my own, but let it be your voice, Jesus. I honor you. I love you. And I praise you. Come on and give him praise in this place. Come on and give him praise. We worship your name. I could just stay here all night. I could stay here all night, but I'm thankful for the crushing. And even though it's hard and sometimes we don't understand things, sometimes we're, we're questioning things, but I'm thankful for that. And y'all can, you can stay up here if you want. Sure. Yeah, if you want to. You want to go? It's up to you. I mean, if you want to stay, that would be awesome. Yeah. I love, I, yeah, I'm like my daddy in that. I actually asked him to play the organ, but he refused, so. I'm pretty mad about that, actually. I'm still holding a grudge about that. Um, <clears throat> but I am so honored and blessed to be here. This is this is fertile ground here. This is where my grandpa preached, and, and he preached. And now you can see that my brother is following in those footsteps because he just can't, can't stop. It's just like he can't cut it off at all. I mean, he, he pretty much could have just took it over. And preach my message. You were pretty close to it. I was actually worried that, because you were kind of saying some things in here. And I was pretty mad. No, I'm kidding. Um, but, um, so, when mom asked me to do this, um, I told the Lord beforehand that whatever door he opens, I'm going to go. I'm going to do it. And this is something that I don't do. First off, I didn't go to college for this. Um, barely graduated. I didn't really graduate in my high school, but I did graduate. Um, <clears throat> but this is something I do not, I never thought I would do. Um, I'm like, Jesus, are you sure? Like, but I know that he, he makes you do some uncomfortable things because he wants to know that he has it, that I don't have it. Um, so, yeah, he has it in Jesus' name. Um, but this message is called Diamond in the Rough. So if y'all taking notes, get your notepad out. I think it's going to be good. Now, um, get your notepad out, and I really feel like, whew, this is doing some things in me. When, whenever she called me and told me that she feels like I'm supposed to do it, um, of course, I questioned myself, but also, I'm going to walk through the door like I told him I was going to, and um, I was like, okay, shine on, as you can tell, shine on, I'm like going with the theme here, I'm not trying to stick out, trust me, I know it's kind of blingy maybe too much. I was like actually worried when I came in. I was like, this is probably too much, but it fits with the theme. We're going to shine on for Jesus. Amen. <clears throat> so whenever I'm speaking, I would love for y'all to get involved um, and preach with me, like say amen, because it helps me like not puke and like not fall over because I'm nervous. But if you all get with me, then it'll be hopefully amazing. I don't know. Whatever, Lord. Um, okay, so if y'all want to turn to your Bibles to Philippians 2, 14 and 16, just know I'm going to read a lot of words, so your iPhone may be better, so you can go there quicker. Um, no, I'm kidding, but Philippians 2, 14, 16. <clears throat> I'm going to wait a second for y'all to turn there. All right, I'm just going to go ahead and read. Uh, a little awkward. Do everything without grumbling or arguing so that you may become blameless and pure. Children of God without fault in a warped and crooked generation. Then you will shine among them like stars in the sky as you hold firmly to the word of life. And then I will be able to boast on the day of Christ that I did not run or labor in vain. That's my prayer that I never labor in vain. Amen that we don't labor in vain. Um, diamond in the rough is one having exponential qualities or potential, but lacking refinement or polish. So I want y'all to kind of remember that, lacking refinement or polish. Um, diamonds are cut so that a light ray falling on the diamond is reflected multiple times inside the diamond and therefore sends light out in all directions. Actually, diamonds don't shine, they reflect. Ladies, what are we reflecting today? Matthew 5, 16, let your light shine before men that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. So when I go to, a, let's say, a jewelry store, 
am I going to look at diamonds that shine? Am I going to go to a diamond that shines? Or am I going to go to a diamond that is dual? So what I'm saying is, how will anyone want what I have if nothing is different? So for instance, for instance, if I'm a diamond, but, you know, I have things going on in my life, and there's things hidden in my life, and, and I'm trying to win people to Christ, but I'm living in what they're doing. You know what I mean? Like, how can I, how can I really pull them to Jesus if I'm not there? Okay, I'm stepping on my toes here. It's kind of uncomfortable. I'm just kidding. How to choose a diamond that sparkles? Be sure to examine the diamond under four different light sources. Examine your walk with Christ right now. Examine deep down. Deep down is something hindering your sparkle, hindering your shine for Jesus. It is hard, is it hard for others to see Jesus in you because of some roots in your life that you continue to try and to cover up? Your insecurities, depression, life pain, bondage that you continue to walk back in. So there's a difference when you're walking out of something, but you have to completely be free because you can come right back. Is there something in your life right now that needs to be cut off at the root? Y'all, I mean, there's some things in my life that, yeah, I was happy. I was happy here and there. But there were some roots that I thought, I thought I cut off in my life, but they were still deep, deep down, deep, deep down. I didn't know you were videoing me. Made me nervous. Woo. Pay attention to the cutting style. When I look over my life, I am thankful for every cut, every trial, every hardship, because it has shaped me into the woman of God I am today. And even though I have a past, I am still worth so much that he still died for me. You may have a past, but he still chose you. Thankful that our past doesn't affect our price. Thankful that our past doesn't affect our price. Ooh, thankful. I'm thankful for that. God formed each of you in his image. You are perfect in his eyes. And I pray that as women, we can see ourselves the way he sees us. He formed each of you in your mother's womb and knew you before you were born and set us all apart and appointed us as prophets to the nations. He appointed us as prophets to the nations. That doesn't say um, to sit in my pew and, you know, look cute every Sunday. That says prophet to the nations. We got to do a work. We got to do something. You know what I mean? Like we can sit here all day, but it's just, it's just what the word says. And we're followers of Jesus, so it says prophet to the nations to go and do something. Cutting is a way God shows us he loves us because what kind of father would he be if he didn't correct, correct us? So, can I get some water, please? Thank you. Um, I'm thankful for my dad for correcting me. Like, I'm, it's so dry. But I'm thankful for my dad and all the, all the times he corrected me, and I was mad sometimes at him. It's like I'm going to call the police on him. Um, but <laughs> but I'm, so, I'm so thankful that, that he stood his ground and... I'm thankful for the correction in my life because I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for him and my mom and praying. The prayers of a mother and father don't go void. And they didn't, and God, uh, he saved me. I, I don't know where I would be. Like, Blake knows. He still talks about my past sometimes. But um, I'm thankful. I'm thankful that what I did in my past doesn't define who I am today. And that's a word for you. That's a word for you. That it doesn't matter. Oh, okay. I love you. That it doesn't matter. That it doesn't matter the things we do. Like, obviously, God wants us to, to walk in a, in a straight path. But sometimes we, we make mistakes. Sometimes we choose the wrong path. But it doesn't affect our price. He still, he still values us so much. I'm thankful for that. Pay attention to the cut quality. So you see, look at your diamonds. Put, you see your rings. Pay attention to the cut qualities. An excellent cut grade is very bright. This tells you the cutter, which is God, 
created the best possible stone from the rough, which I believe we are all striving for. A very good cut grade means that diamond has bright areas evenly distributed across the stones. The stones, okay, let me go back. A very good cut grade means the diamond has bright areas evenly distributed across the stone's crown in few distracting areas. Are you distracted by something tonight? Is something hindering you? Are you not able to pick up your cross because you are living in sin? The Bible clearly states that we are called to be his disciples. It's hard to be a light for Jesus when we are distracting those around us who really need Jesus. Good enough. It's hard to be a light for Jesus when we are distracting those around who really need Jesus. Good enough, God doesn't just want okay. He didn't call us just to live an okay, good life. Good cut grade isn't quite as bright. Reflections aren't as sharp and there's more darkness or dullness in the diamond. We reflect what's in our heart. What is your cut quality tonight? Are we doing all we can for the work of Jesus? When you get saved, (laughs) when you get saved, there's a price to be paid. And we can live a good life and think that's going to get us into heaven, but when it all comes down to it, Is something hindering our shine for Jesus? Are we we not living a life like he wants us to live? So keep the diamond clean. This is important. Diamonds love grease. So it's important to clean, to search on a regular basis. Search on a regular basis. It's not just a Wednesday and Sunday type of love. It's not just a Wednesday and Sunday type of thing. I mean, when it all... A diamond that is dirty will not sparkle. So there's no light. If, if it's dirty, there's, there's no light at all. You're not reflecting anything. And the grease not only attaches to the diamond, but will leave grease on whatever it comes in contact with. Are you leaving the wrong mark on the people around you? And this is what hit me the hardest. Who walks in your life will leave with something who walks in your life will leave with something good or bad. And the sad thing is, is I look back over my, my high school days and when I, when I thought I, I wanted to fit in and I thought I wanted to fit in and be somebody that I wasn't. Um, and the, the fact of the matter is, the, the thing I could have done for Jesus I could have warned my friends that that are not here today, like Lacey, who who got in a, a bike accident and is no longer here. I could have been a witness to her. And I and I'm not saying that I'm gonna, you know, think about that all the time, but I'm just saying it's what you do now. It's are you helping others? Or are you pulling them away? What you reflect, others will see. Are you more worried about fitting in? I've been there, than reflecting Jesus, reflecting truth. Are you reflecting some dirt that is deep down? I've stayed in bondage because I didn't cut the root off. I stayed in it. I stayed in bondage. And even when I got out of a relationship that I was in, I still stayed in bondage. Um, But you have to cut the root off. You have to cut it off from the bottom. Diamond sparkle can be lost by a touch of a finger which can cause dirt to collect on the diamond. Who are you allowing to touch and speak into your life that's causing grease to build up and to hinder your shine? Who are you allowing to touch and speak into your life that's causing grease to build up and hinder your shine? Sorry, but just not anyone can speak in and over my life. If you don't match up with the word and don't follow him, I'm not receiving I'm not receiving from you. I love you so much, but it it comes to a point that I need godly people to speak into my life. Because if you're not speaking into my life, if you're not following God, 
that all I'm going to do is I'm going to go with you. Like, it's, it's just not going to work. How can I keep my diamond clean? To soak. Definition for soak means to absorb something, to take in something. I know when you begin to soak in his presence on a daily basis, you start to change. I mean, I've realized it in my marriage. I, whenever we first got together um, and got married, and I was like, this boy is up there praising and, like, shouting and speaking in tongues up there. And I was like, I'm just too nervous to do that with him. Like, I just, I would pray with him, but, like, you know what I mean? Like, it, it was kind of different for me. I never, I saw my dad scream and shout on the stage and all that. But um, he, Caleb, you know, he don't care. He just, and I love that about him. But when we begin to pray together and soak in the presence of God together, that's when my life started to change. My life began to change completely. I began, I began to see things I haven't seen before. I've, I've been able to, to see him and look at him and love him the way Christ loves him. And, and whenever you begin to pray together and seek God together, you really see how much Jesus loves you and, and how he sees you. He begins to clean up some areas and begins to restructure your life. God wants to walk with us before he can walk through us. God wants to walk with us before he can walk through us. So you want a pulpit, you want a microphone, are you walking with him? Are you really walking with him? Because it gets to a point in life where it's not about this. I don't even care if I got it. I really don't. I don't care if I sing another song and I love singing, that's my heart. But I don't care, it's like my, my whole situation has changed. I don't see this. I see this. God's glory, his radiance, his brilliance don't depend on the responses of others. He is who he says he is. And I'll say that again. He is who he says he is. And, and no word that he speaks in his word, nothing goes void. And there's so many times you question God, like, what are you doing to me? What are you, what's going on? Why am I waiting? Why am I in this for so long? But, but his word, it doesn't go void. And, and it's, it's, it's life. Like it's alive. So everything you speak in will speak out in you. God's glory, his radiance, his brilliance don't depend on the responses of others. He is who he says he is. Are you hiding your light tonight? When we hide our light, we are hiding the saving, redeeming work of Jesus Christ. When we hide our light, we hide the work he has set forth for us to do. When we hide our light, we hide the work he has set forth for us to do. But when we live based on the light that is within us, we are truly living in his will. And we are living with purpose. Not just living, but we're living with a purpose and a plan. God called us to go to be his brave disciple. Your aim is to please him, not men. And I've, I've really wanted acceptance from a lot of people, and I've wanted to please men. But your aim is to please him, not men. Speak in his truth. To listen to others. It's not just, you know, being on your phone while pastor's preaching, you have to listen. You have to, you have to soak it, write down some, write it down and make it plain. Christ has already determined your value. Your value doesn't matter with what your ex says or your ex-friends say or your value doesn't matter. Christ has already determined your value. Pray like never before. Get in the word. How can we truly do his work if we don't know him? Like if we don't, we don't have a relationship with him, how can we be a witness? How, how are we going to do his work if we don't even know who he is? Be who God created you to be. God created you for a reason. Mary Magdalene had nothing going for her. She lived in a day when women's worth was only in conceiving a boy. In court, her view didn't matter. 
and to think she couldn't even worship on the same side of the men in her community. She was delivered from seven demons completely controlling her life. And to believe Jesus considered her to be one of his disciples. And was the first one to relay the message that Jesus had risen. That her past didn't delay her future. That her past didn't stop her future. That she picked up her own cross and didn't look back. That she did not look back. That she followed Jesus. It's easy to look back over past memories when you may have allowed things to control your mind. I've, I've been there. Insecurities and doubt, fear controlled and crippled me. It crippled me. When you may have allowed things to control your mind, you may have completely messed up, but thankfully Jesus sees your future, and he sees you. To become all he has for you, you're going to have to go through some fire. You're going to have to go through some things. In ancient times, gold refined involved the craftsmen sitting next to a hot fire with gold being stirred to remove the impurities, to become the purest gold. I believe that the Lord is stirring up some things in you right now. To shine for Christ, we must get every impurity out. We must take our relationship with Jesus more seriously. And is there anyone who is lost tonight? Anyone lose their shine over some past hurts to loss of a family member, um, depressed, addicted, uh, addictions controlling you, a, a divorce is going on? insecurities, church hurt. I believe right now that he is soaking you in his presence and transforming you into the woman of God he has called you to be. No longer will the grease hinder your shine. I believe he is clean, he's cleansing you, and from now on your diamonds will be able to reflect who Jesus is and will no longer distract others but point to Jesus. That is our duty. That's our duty. Our duty is to point others to Jesus, not to pull them away. When you examine your relationships, are they pulling you to the cross? Are, you, are they taking you to the cross with them? Or, or are they pulling you away from him? Are they pulling you away from the very thing that, that you know of? I truly believe that... Um, that there is some people right now that are dealing with the things that I just said. And, and I know the loss of a family member. And I know how hard it is. And then, oh, thank you for that. It's, it is making me cry, though. I love that. It is, it is doing that. But I'm thankful um, that I'm standing on the word that, for instance, my grandmother, like, I love that woman so much. And it breaks my heart breaks me because I know that the enemy has a hold of her but that sickness it can be healed and and the thing is is that you allow things in your family generational curses to control your own mind and you're not you're not even going through it but it controls your mind and and whatever you're going through right now if it's a, a generational sickness that that you believe that's happening to you or, or if it's something in your family that's, that's going on. If, if you're lost right now and you need Jesus, he's here to meet you. And, and God has created you for a purpose to shine, not to be dull and to sit on a pew, but to shine for him and to do his work. So again, is anybody lost tonight who needs a savior? anybody need to clean their diamond tonight? Does anybody need to soak in his presence and get it all out, get everything out? Because I know tomorrow night and, and Saturday, y'all better get ready. Is there any junk that needs to just come off tonight? Because God's about to do some things in you this weekend. Are you depressed? Are you living? Are you living depressed? 
Is somebody addicted to something? It can be anything. Are you, are you addicted to something that, that, you, that you choose that addiction over Jesus? Um, is there a divorce that is hurting you so bad or insecurities that you're facing tonight? Church hurt that you're facing that you're not good enough tonight? Or is there anything that, that could be hindering you and your walk for Christ because we're called to go out and be bold? Is anything hindering your boldness tonight? Is there any doubt in your mind tonight? I believe he's wanting to do something in your life tonight and I don't know if you've come here expecting, but I believe that he's going to do it. Um, are you ready for it? Is Are you ready for the Lord to, to make new wine out of you? And I don't know. I just, maybe you just bow your heads. Just, just go ahead and close your eyes right now. Close your eyes. And, and I just, I just speak, Father, that. Father, I speak to anything right now that's hindering your people, God, that we don't have to walk in addiction, God, that we don't have to walk in sickness, God, that we don't have to walk bound, Father. But, Lord, that we serve a risen Savior that can resurrect everything in our life if we believe it. So, Father, Lord, I ask God right now that you convict some hearts, Father, who need you, who have been pulled away from the cross, who, who are going the opposite direction of you when they need you, Jesus. I can't do it without you. We cannot do this walk without you. It's a tough walk. But, God, you paid the ultimate price so we can pay the price, Father. We can do what needs to be done for you, Father. We can go to the highways and to the byways and to proclaim you. Is something hindering your shine tonight? If anybody needs a touch, just come on to the front. And just come to the front and surrender. Surrender it all. Surrender every hurt. Surrender every wound. Surrender every pain. Because you can't walk into the next season with the same bondage, with the same baggage. You've got to move. You've got to move. Is there anybody tonight? Carry my old flame to carry your new fire today. Because where there is new wine, there is new power. There is new freedom and the King. Carry your new fire today. Come on and just lay down your old flames tonight. I know there's more than just a couple. I know there's more than just a couple. Where there is new wine, there is new power. There is new freedom. And the kingdom is here. I lay down my old flame. To carry your new fire today. Don't let anything hold you back tonight. I still, I still don't feel like this is it. And, I, and I'm not going to just sit here all night. But I, I don't feel like this is it. And I want to pray with you. But I, I truly believe that somebody is addicted tonight. That they are bound by something that's holding them captive. I don't know, but I just believe that somebody tonight is, is going through an addiction problem and they need a healing. And I know the healer and he's here. He's here to meet your need tonight. And if there's somebody tonight that just wants more of him, just come to the front. Come on, everybody just come to the front. I believe that he's here. Come on. If you're going through anything, just, just begin to pray and just begin to seek him to create some new wine in you, to create some new dreams in you, to create a new plan in your life. Because I believe that something is going to happen. I believe that you're called greater to greater.
There is no freedom.